Now don't go wandering off. Your mother and I are just going downstairs to have dinner with some friends. Then we'll be back up, Donald said to his ten-year-old son, Jeff. Don't worry, Dad. I'll be fine. We have Wi-Fi. Jeff's mother, Heather, walked over to him and gave him a kiss on the forehead. Maybe you should get some of your summer reading done while we're gone. Love you, she said softly. Jeff watched his parents shuffle out the door as he picked up his iPad to watch YouTube videos. After about 30 minutes, he began to get thirsty. He hopped off the bed and checked the mini-fridge. Oh no, he said out loud as he stared into the empty fridge. He dug into his pockets remembering there was a vending machine down the hall. As they passed by it earlier, he remembered his dad saying, Four dollars for a soda? That's highway robbery. Jeff thought at the time, how could highway robbery occur inside a hotel hallway? Anyway, he said internally, back to the task at hand. He scrounged up four one dollar bills, grabbed his room key, and started what he was referring to mockingly in his own head as his grand adventure. He opened the door and quickly shut it behind him upon stepping into the hallway. He took a look left and right, and everything seemed very different than before. The hallway was much darker, almost colorless, with what seemed to be a slight fog in the air. Startled a bit, but not deterred, he began walking towards the elevator where the vending machine was. As he walked, he began to hear a slight growl in the distance behind him. He turned around to check, but saw nothing. He picked up his pace as he headed to the vending machine. Something was very wrong, though. He could swear there were different paintings on the wall the first time he came down this way. The ones up now looked a bit older. As he got to the halfway point, a couple passed by him. He looked up and gave a smile and went to say, hey... But as he opened his mouth, the growling from behind happened again, and this time, it was much louder. Instead of saying hi, he asked the couple slightly bewildered, Did, hey, did, did, did you hear that? But the couple didn't even flinch to look down at him. They walked right by without even acknowledging the boy. Rude, he thought quickly, but decided to run the rest of the way to the vending machine. As he approached the elevator, he was in shock. The vending machine was gone. In its place, a shoe shine station where there was a sign that said 10 cents. Now Jeff panicked. He ran back to his room and quickly opened and shut the door. His parents were in there. Shocked that he missed them walk by, he cried out in joy. Mom, Dad, something really weird's happening here. But they didn't acknowledge him. They looked concerned, and his father was holding a phone. He's only 10 for God's sakes, get someone down here to help us find him. He screamed into the phone. He stood in front of his dad yelling, but it was no use. Frantic, Jeff ran out of the room to find someone that could see him. He had forgot about the growl. As he made it to the hall, the growl had turned into a blood curdling scream. And now he could see a dark shadow figure heading towards him. Before he had time to react, a man with a big bushy mustache and a cowboy hat grabbed him by the arm and pushed him into his room. Before he closed the door, he gave the boy a head nod and vanished into the colorless hallway. Jeff's parents screamed for joy that their boy was back in the room. As the family was leaving the hotel the following day, Jeff noticed a photo of a man hanging on the wall. Mom, Dad, that's the man. That's, that's the man that helped me. That's him. There hung a picture of Seth Bullock, the original owner of the hotel. Sweetie, that can't be right. That plaque says that he's been dead for over a hundred years. As they walked towards the exit, Jeff took one look back. And down towards the back of the room, he once again saw the man that helped him. The man tipped his hat and disappeared one more time. I'm Rob Coakley, and this is Hometown Ghost Stories, Deadwood, South Dakota. Deadwood sits in the far western portion of the state of South Dakota. It began illegally in the mid-1870s, shortly after General Custer announced the discovery of gold in the nearby Black Hills. The problem with starting this town was that the land had been given to the Native American people of the Lakota tribe, and they considered this land sacred. And the town itself 
may be cursed because of this. The town has nearly burned to the ground on three separate occasions. The most famous of them being in 1879 when the entire town was practically wiped away. In 1883, the town would be hit by a flood that would damage the businesses that had recovered. Deadwood itself is very much the embodiment of what people dream up when they think of the Wild West. Lawlessness, saloons, gambling, and prostitution would run rampant in the early years of the town. This would bring in many famous gunslingers and Wild West legends, and none may have been more notorious than Wild Bill Hickok. Wild Bill lived a life doing many different things. He would go from frontiersman, army scout, lawman, gunfighter, to gambler, and seemingly everything in between. At one point in an interview, he claimed to have killed over 100 men, though the more likely number is much closer to 6 or 7. On August 1st, 1876, Wild Bill was playing cards at saloon number 10, and a man named Jack McCall was losing badly. Bill would convince the man to stop playing, and even offered him some money for breakfast. Jack would accept the money, but would feel terribly insulted by this. The following day, Wild Bill would return to the saloon to rejoin the card game. At the time, the only seat at the table would have his back facing the room. Having made many enemies over the years, Bill generally would only play if he could have his back to the wall. He pleaded with a few players to change seats with him, but they would not, and he reluctantly took his seat and began to play. While he sat playing, McCall entered the saloon, walked up to Wild Bill and shouted, Damn you, take that, and shot him in the back of the head at point-blank range. The bullet would go through his head and out his cheek, even entering the arm of a player sitting next to Bill. Wild Bill would fall forward and die instantly. The hand he was holding was two black aces and two black eights, which is now known as the dead man's hand in poker. McCall would be tried and found not guilty of the crime. However, he would later be retried, found guilty, and hanged. The original saloon number 10 would burn to the ground. There is now a new saloon number 10 in Deadwood. Although it's not quite in the exact place of the old one, but within it, they do have the chair that Wild Bill sat in when he was murdered. Wild Bill Bar and Trading Post is now actually sitting in the spot of the original saloon that he was murdered in. The building has been home to the hauntings of Wild Bill among others. Voices and shadows of patrons of the past have been seen and heard all throughout the building. And Wild Bill himself has even been contacted through spirit box sessions and EVPs. When talking about the hauntings in Deadwood, many locations will pop up. However, the most famous of them all is likely the Bullock Hotel. In 1876, Seth Bullock and his partner decided to open a hardware store in the newly formed Deadwood. Wild Bill was shot two days before Bullock arrived in town, and the event had made the town crave law enforcement. Based on his previous experience, the governor at the time would appoint Bullock as the first sheriff of Deadwood, which he would serve as for nine months until losing in the first election for the spot. In 1894, one of the many fires of Deadwood would claim Bullock's business. Instead of rebuilding the same store, he opted to build a luxury hotel. Since his death in 1919, the hauntings at the hotel have been prevalent. It is believed that the spirit of Seth and others are still within the hotel walls. Room 211 is particularly said to be haunted. Room 211 is where Seth is believed to have stayed when he was at the hotel. Although he did not die in this room, which is a common rumor, cigar smoke is often smelled within the room, as well as doors opening and closing on their own. Some guests have even reported objects moving on their own within the room and hotel. Many believe that Seth is there to keep an eye on the staff. Oftentimes, when workers are standing idly, objects will move or loud bangs will occur. One night, a bartender quit his job on the spot as he witnessed Seth Bullock slowly begin to appear at the end of the bar and then disappear again, almost right away. A family staying in the hotel had a terrifying situation occur. The mother and father were out of their room for a bit, leaving their child there. When they came back, their son was gone. Frantically, they searched around the hotel looking for the young boy. Unable to find him, 
They returned to the room in a panic to call the authorities. As they entered, there was the boy sitting on the bed. He explained to his parents that he wasn't sure how he had gone missing, but that a nice man with a cowboy hat and big bushy mustache had helped lead him back to the room. When checking out the next day, the boy pointed to a painting on the wall of Seth Bullock and said, That's the man that helped me. Seth Bullock isn't believed to be the only spirit haunting the hotel. Smells play a big part of the hauntings at the Bullock, and on top of the cigar smoke, the smell of roses and lilacs are frequently reported throughout the building. Voices of men and women are often heard without any explanation of where they are coming from. And then, there's the cellar. The cellar at one point was used as a smallpox ward. There have been sightings of a little girl named Sarah, who was a patient down here, who watched her mother die of the disease before passing away herself. The girl has been seen playing and heard singing by the staff on occasion in the cellar. Also, she has been known to roam the building. During one occasion, a party was being thrown at the hotel. Balloons were being filled with helium and rising to the ceiling. Staff then witnessed what appeared to be someone tugging individual balloons down one at a time as if someone were playing with them. The problem with this is that no one was there. Later on, during the party, every single balloon popped at the exact same moment. Many believe that this was the ghost of Sarah playing a trick on the guest. Most of the hauntings at the Bullock are of a harmless nature, but very seldomly there have been reports of a shadow-like entity lurking the hallways. When approached by this shadowy figure, people have reported feeling sad and nauseous. The sightings of this particular spirit have been few and far between, though. Deadwood is the perfect representation of life in the Old West. The hardships endured in creating a new town. The lawlessness that made the times exciting but dangerous. The evolution needed to continue forward. And perhaps a curse on the town that is still there to this day. And all of this is still on full display daily and nightly throughout the hauntings of one of the most infamous towns of the Wild West. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into Hometown Ghost Stories, episode number 72, Deadwood, South Dakota. I'm Jesse Wilkins. I'm joined by Rob Coakley. Hello, Rob. That Patreon list is growing and growing, and it is a amazing thing to see, honestly. It is. Yeah, we do appreciate it. We had our little Patreon pre-show hangout before the show today, and there were so many people in there that we had to like take shifts and pop people in and out. So we appreciate everyone who did that, and it was fun hanging out and seeing some of you guys. And today we got a bunch of stories about some interesting animals in Australia from, from uh, Joe, wasn't it? And yep. uh, that was awesome. So uh, real quick, let's oh, well, say hi to Dave. Hi, Dave. Uh, hey. Hey, uh, welcome in. All right. Back thanks to for having me. <laughs> thanks for acknowledging uh, my presence. <laughs> quick shout out to everybody in Super Chat who donated before this uh, live portion even began. That includes Josh O, Ricardo, Anna C came in with a pie donation of $3.14. Matthew T was in there. And I think that's it for now. So thank you guys so much for donating. We appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, episode 72, that's almost episode 73, and we are ticking along here, closing in on 100, closing in on 100, we'll have to have an exciting um, announcement about 100 when we get up there, so that's some uh, some good stuff. Welcome to everyone who's hanging out in live chat, I see a whole bunch of the regulars and some new faces as well, but we got Joe, we have Since, Andy, Matthew T. Hold and, on, time out. Yep. Since you brought it up, why don't, if you haven't joined the Discord jump in the discord and let us know what you think we should cover for episode 100. That's Ooh, a good idea. Good. Yeah, that would be a good one. That would be a good one. The only kind I have, Dave. Uh-huh. Yes, I agree. Yeah, so it's got to be a big one for episode 100. And I think we're going to do some sort of a live event as well. We had discussed some things with some places. I believe it'll be in Plymouth. 
we don't really have to talk about this yet. It's pretty far away. But anyways, uh, yeah, so Deadwood, South Dakota. There was a show about this, I believe, on HBO, wasn't there? There was, and it was on my watch list for years. I think it came out in, like, 2004, and I was always like, I need to watch Deadwood. Never watched it. I finally watched the first episode last night because I was started covering this. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll take an hour and just actually watch this episode. And uh, it's pretty good so far. I, I'm only an episode in, so I can't say if it's a great show or not. But everyone that li- that watches it seems to really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taco brought up a good point of us setting up a PO box, which would be a, which would be fun to kind of let people send us things. Maybe he'll send us tacos. He or she oh. sends us tacos. Mark, Mark coming in with uh, three dollars in super chat. Thank you so much. Is the Sweet. is it haunted? The PO box? Yes. I actually don't know what that question's about, but yes, I'm just going to go with yes. <laughs> so, um, if we're going to set up a PO box, it should be a haunted PO box. Mm. We, we demand we demand a haunted number. <laughs> we put incantations on it. Do you have an opening ghost story for us, Dave? Uh, that's an, a weird way to put it, an opening ghost story. but uh, It's yeah. a user ghost story. You know what? Let's let's talk about it, about you not knowing words and what I mean when I say them. Oh, I knew exactly what you meant, but I like to give you a hard time because it's uh, fun to do. Yeah, so we have our listener submitted ghost story segment, which we'll do at the beginning this time because there's a storm here and I could lose power at any moment. So without further ado, this one is from Lily in Michigan, although the story takes place in Ohio. So uh, Lily sent this back to us on New Year's Eve. Eve, or just after New Year's Eve, and this happened on New Year's Eve. So, this is from Lily. We were visiting Ohio with friends for New Year's. Well, our friend Robert gave the option of going to dinner at his family's restaurant slash inn. We decided to take him up and ate at the Murfin Ridge Inn. The food was amazing. Then our friend mentioned something about Sarah's room. My toes were tingling. I was so excited. After we brought it up to our staff or after we brought it up to the staff, they would get quiet and leave. Once everyone left and we were only, once everyone left and we were the only customers left in the restaurant, we met the staff, got a picture, and they told us about how a lady had died in the building over a hundred years ago named Sarah. No details of her death were specific, but the property has confirmed it and the possibility of two others. She said to throw pictures off walls and knock stuff over. Obviously, I wanted to see her room. Our friends took us up to the room, which was used as a uh, merchant room for mugs and such that they made for the restaurant. As soon as me and my friend Nicole walked into the room, both of our hearts started pumping really hard. She ended up walking right back out and tried to just relax her breath. I stayed in with Robert and looked around. It was small, maybe 10 foot by 12 foot room, full of knickknacks and merch and two lounge chairs and a dresser. Nicole comes back inside and is adoring the mugs. I got a really weird feeling in my stomach, and I started zoning out. All of a sudden, something pet my face. Just a super light brushing of the back of their hand on my cheek. Assuming it was just my friend Nicole, I turn around expecting to bump into both her and Robert, but they were reading a pricing paper on the other side of the room. I felt really sick, walked out of the room, and halfway down the stairs. Nicole asked if I was okay, but I felt like I was going to throw up and have a panic attack at the same time. We got downstairs and said our goodbyes. Mid-conversation, I started feeling really dizzy and got an an inexplicable feeling of needing to be back in that room again. Now, that's the story. And I liked this story for the specific reason of that last line, which was she got the feeling that she wanted to be back in the room again. And that's an interesting detail. It's not one that we hear all the time. Except that in some cases of like demonic, like the Sally house, for instance, when the people that have, you know, the guy moved out of the Sally house and down the street, but he always felt like a longing to go back to that house for some reason, despite all the horrible things that happened there. And that's what caught my attention about this story. And I thought that was really interesting and creepy. What was the exact location on that? Chat's asking. Uh, That was. Well, if you don't have an exact location, that's. Yeah, well, the Murfin, the Murfin Ridge, you know, the Murfin Ridge Inn in ohio she didn't specify what town but i believe she's in chat and could if she feels like she wants to i've haven't heard of that one besides this story that sounds pretty interesting yeah creepy 
creepy story. Thanks for sharing, Lily. Do appreciate that. Yeah, Murfin I, Ridge, um, a Murfin Ridge Inn and a five star restaurant is a five star. I don't, and well, I don't understand that comment, but I'm guessing it's a five star restaurant. Yeah, um, restaurant inn. So must be nice, 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 nice. Murfin Ridge is the town. Oh, so. gotcha. Well, thank you for that. And if you guys want your ghost stories to be read out on the podcast, or if you just want to share them, you can always send them over on Discord or via email. And we will uh, check those out. And with your permission, we'll read about on the show. So thanks for that, Lily. All right. Let's get into Deadwood now, because I have some thoughts on this town and I want to start off kind of hot on it. And I touch on it very briefly in the pre-produced section, but I kind of want to dive in a little more and see what you guys' thoughts are. So this town begins after General Custer finds a little bit of gold and the area and this is native american sacred land and these people come here and they just don't care they just set up shop begin this town in a spot they're not supposed to it was highly like debated went to legislation over them starting it but the the lakota tribe believed that this place was sacred and these people were violating the sacred land and then you get fire after fire, after fire, and floods. And we've done enough Cursed Possession episodes where this feels like it's almost like a cursed location. And I wonder if that has to do with not only the fires, the floods, but maybe the hauntings as well. Yeah, you might be right about that. They had some, they, they say that that whole area is haunted, not just Deadwood. But they yeah. say Deadwood is probably the most haunted place in that area. I don't know if it's called like the Black Mountains or the Black Hills. Are you sure about that? Do you know the details on that? I think it's the Black mm, Mountains. Either one sounds relatively yeah. the same. But either way, so the, yeah, they, it's definitely like sacred land. It was Native American land, as we talk about. Uh, that, I mean, that's probably on the bingo cards, right? So that's one thing that we always go back to on a lot of episodes and it's the reason i think for a lot of hauntings it's also people just kind of like this is probably native american burial ground so they kind of check that off as as a possible reason for it but this one in particular was said to be sacred burial grounds it was uh, of the black hills and it says okay uh, and they say it's all centralized around deadwood and in that particular area they it was a burial ground but they didn't even really bury their dead over there According to one guy who's a tribe leader, as my dog licks my microphone. All right, so, so you gotta go. Um, <laughs> according to one of the, uh, I don't know if he was a chief or what, what his actual position was, but he was saying uh, he was a descendant of people that were in the area for a long time, and they wouldn't even bury their dead. Their their practice was they would wrap them in like a cow, like a cow hide or whatever, and they would just lay them out on top of the ground and just mm -hmm. leave them there. And so there would just be a ton of bodies just all around where Deadwood now is, and you know. I don't know what the rules are, but that could definitely lead to something happening there for sure. They, their cemetery, Mount Moriah Cemetery, also has like different sections and they have a mass grave in that cemetery just to uh, expand upon that too. So I, I think it does have something to do with, with the blatant disrespect of taking over this land and the search of greed. It's not like they were doing it because they like needed a place to stay. This town was created specifically over greed and trying to capitalize on finding gold. It would explain the hauntings and it would explain why there are so many negative hauntings, right? Mm -hmm. We do a lot of locations where there's a like a mix sometimes of negative hauntings and positive hauntings and all these ones seem to be bad. You know what I mean? Well, I think this one's kind of mixed. Um, the Seth Bullock one where he's he's very friendly but there's other stuff within that hotel that's going on and i only hit on two of the locations like this entire to your point this entire town there's like three other hotels that are haunted there's other bars that are haunted mount mariah cemetery i mean we might have to come back to deadwood and we say this all the time but i kind of want to go to deadwood it looks like <laughs> it looks fun and the bullock hotel is like 40 or 50 dollars to stay in for the night it's Still, not, yeah, I wonder how limited the yeah. rooms are because I think it's only three floors and there isn't a ton of rooms there, but it does look awesome, dude. Give me any Wild West saloon looking place and I will absolutely stay there. But all of those are on the list for me. I know our list grows with literally every single episode. I don't think we've done an episode where I'm like, nah, I have no interest in going there. Every <laughs> single one, I'm like, gotta do it. 
we gotta yeah, do it. We got sure. we gotta go to every single place. But this is a part of the country that I personally haven't been to, like that upper middle part. It's like one of the few spots that I haven't been to. So there's not many places up there that I do want to go that I know about yet, right? Like you said, we learned about new places, but right now, like in order to get into that Dakota region, Deadwood feels like the place to go check out. Yeah, there's that like cluster of like the middle, like upper middle of the country, or like even like just the middle of the country. I'm like, oh yeah, we can hit all these spots at the same time, right? Do like yeah. Deadwood, <laughs> Kansas, yeah. and just they all they're seem only like a, they're really close together. They're only a 20 hour drive from each other. <laughs> yeah. right? we, we're so used to living in cluster, right? New England, where like we're in Boston and we're like, we can be to New York and three to four hours if we want to and you're traversing like three to four states but you're traversing rhode island that's about four miles long and yeah. connecticut which is the worst drive in the country almost but you're getting through these states like at a rapid rate as compared to these other states that are gigantic and you're just sitting there probably looking at nothing the entire ride it's probably beautiful for an hour and you're like okay i've seen enough cow shit for the rest of my life and <laughs> I don't need to keep looking at this. Yeah, Connecticut is just straight forest the entire time you drive through it. I'd still take that over a drive through New York any day, though. Oh, I don't know. Connecticut is like the worst state I've ever driven through. That and I think North Carolina takes forever as well to drive through. I don't think I would imagine some of these Midwestern states are probably much more boring to drive through. You don't even have trees. I don't know. They got those like mountain ranges and stuff, depending on what state you're in. right? right Although right, North right. Carolina has a mountain range, doesn't it? I don't know. Does it, Dave? I don't know. I need Honestly. you guys to stop asking me about mountains. Like, <laughs> like I fucking know what mountain range is where. I don't. I'm not a meteorologist, guys. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you're definitely not. That's for sure. Um, so I, I just wanted to lead this with it being cursed because it just, it has that feeling, right? When you start looking into all these stories and the hauntings, and like you said, it's centrally located in Deadwood, but it's around the entire town. And I think people probably think it's centrally, centrally located because that's where people are spending time. People aren't in the forest as much and seeing the hauntings as frequently as they do in town because there's just people in town all the time. So the entire the entire area does seem seem very creepy, though. Going back to meteorologists, funny story. So on Sunday mornings, I work at a radio station and uh, at one point I have to read out the weather. And I'm like, does this qualify me as a meteorologist? Like, I'm just reading the script that they give me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, at the end of one broadcast, I almost called myself meteorologist. I'm like, but I better not. So I had asked another guy that works there. I was like, I'm like, so I'm like, can I just go be like, I'm meteorologist Jesse Wilkins. He's like, you absolutely cannot. He's like, you cannot <laughs> say that. He's like, get, he's like, not that I would get mad, but the meteorologists will get really mad. I'm Do like, you think sounds like you'll get mad. He's like, you have to call yourself, get it ready for this. You have to call yourself weather observer jesse wilkins <laughs> and i'm like oh i'm gonna own that name and i do it every time now like, i am weather observer jesse wilkins and that's weather for how long have you been referring to yourself as weather observer on air or off air because i have business uh, cards. on air <laughs> do you have business <laughs> cards no no i don't oh. <laughs> weather observer paranormal I say give, it, give it a year and you can start calling yourself veteran weather observer Ooh, nice maybe i'll do that mm. i'm changing we my stats weather, from earlier weather, weather observer I am meteorologist Rob Coakley. Come at me, meteorologist. Let's go. I dare. Let's start with you now. Where you at, Kevin Roth? That is a joke specifically for me. I the funniest really kinds are the ones that only yeah. you get. I I work with him at Roto Grinders. He's he is our actual meteorologist at at Roto Grinders. So. Oh, so you have okay. So he's not a weather observer. He's like no. He's, okay. He he's a legit meteorologist. Noted. Yep. Observer. Do we want to talk about cumulus clouds? Do you have any thoughts? I like the way they look. Cumulonimbus? Yeah, you some some nimbus. Yeah, let's just see how fast we can drop all of our viewers. All right, back to ghost. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I was researching Deadwood, the two places that stuck out to me are Old Saloon Number 10, which is also known as now Wild Bill's Bar, and obviously the Bullock Hotel. And you brought up the show Deadwood, and Deadwood it has all these characters in it. It's obviously not accurate to history. I don't think that uh, Seth Bullock and Wild Bill Hickok were in town at the same time. I think that Wild Bill was killed two days before 
Seth got there. So they kind of interact within the show, at least on the first episode from what I saw. But the the show, the central main character is Seth Bullock. That's who they follow in Deadwood. Like that is who the main protagonist is in the show. So interesting to research this and then start watching that show. Like, oh, that's the guy I just read about for, you know, two weeks to see him getting portrayed on screen. But that is pretty cool because his ghost is one of the ghosts that haunts the place. And they also have Seth's cellar, right? Which is the bar underneath yep. the uh, casino now. Yes. And that actually used to be a smallpox ward where they would keep some of the smallpox uh, people that contracted it. And going back to the Mount Moriah Cemetery, they have a whole separate wing for children. And most of them died from smallpox. It's it's a creepy way to do it where you're separating the children. I don't know if I've ever seen another graveyard that's done that. I'm sure there are others, but like from what we've covered, I have not seen that. No, I don't it's think so. Sad. I've seen them separated by class mm -hmm. in a lot of places or by religion, but I don't think yeah. I've ever seen like a, like a kid's graveyard. That's extra. Yeah. Extra sad. Yeah. It's... Yeah. A lot of times with kids, you, you think they just get buried on a, you know, obviously it's, you don't expect that to happen, but they'll put them on the same plot as other family members that they have. You never see like all the kids together. You do have to wonder if it was some sort of like an orphanage situation. And I know back in the day, a lot of times if you had a sick kid, you just dropped them off and left them, which is yeah. very sad to think about. But um, I wonder if that's kind of that situation, because otherwise wouldn't you go claim the body and put them in your own plot? You maybe, some, so. maybe some families couldn't afford it. Maybe that's why they kind of put them in one spot. But I heard that this, this area of this hospital, when it was acting as a hospital was predominantly for children. Or was it just predominantly for smallpox? It was predominantly for smallpox. So we have the story of the little girl ghost um, from the cellar who was there who died of smallpox. She was down there with her mother. And unfortunately, she watched her mother pass away first. And then she passed away. And that's probably some of the reason that some of these kids were buried this way. Because this might have wiped out whole families. And they might have just been like, put the kids over here. Put the adults over here for whatever reason. And... Yeah, so there was a lot of people that passed away from smallpox in this cellar. And, you know, we've already talked about recipes for a haunting, curses, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, Brad actually brings it up here. He says uh, maybe the smallpox outbreak is another one of the curses. Yeah, absolutely. Um, could definitely be. It just continues. They Their latest fire was in like the 1950s. It's not like this has stopped, right? Like they, they still are having fires. But back to the hauntings, we have this little girl ghost within the hotel and to me, it's real subtle almost, but it's kind of one of the creepier stories I heard when I thought about it, where they were having this party and they were blowing up these balloons with a helium machine and they're watching the balloons and it looks like someone's just yanking one down at like, you know, like going up to them and just pulling one down at a time. And it's just, they're just watching these balloons drop and go back up like someone like a kid would do like kids run around and they do this with the balloons. And they're like, well, that's kind of weird. And then during the party, it's they said that at the same exact moment, it's not like in succession or anything else, at the same moment, every balloon that had been blown up pops at the same, like, all together. Which that's is scary. Like a crazy <laughs> anomaly, right? Like, if not that's really. an anomaly. No, if they're all, so if they're all collected together and they're all touching, static electricity, which can pop one balloon, mm -hmm. can also pop all of them at the exact same time. Which really? is, yeah. But they'd have to be touching. That's, that's an important fact to bring up. And they very well could. You see a lot of times when balloons are in the same area, they all kind of gravitate together. Yeah, that's the same. So the same static electricity would cause them to collect and touch also could cause them all to pop. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, but it wouldn't explain there's... like how they're getting pulled down one at a time. So right. that's uh, those two things together is pretty weird. Maybe it could have been like a, some sort of an AC unit or uh, some something blowing air into the building and it was causing the balloons to go down. Oh, maybe. And then with them going up and down so much, maybe they cause friction, create a little electricity, electricity and uh, cause them all to pop. I know mm. scientists, but maybe. <laughs> so that could be you're, that. You're a there meteorologist. Is, that's a scientist. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a science observer, right? I'm really <laughs> a scientist. So the, uh, some interesting hauntings with this little kid. Now there was a few employees there that have seen the little kid ghost. Mm -hmm. they, they believe it's a little girl ghost, right? Correct. And there's also a little boy ghost as well. And I think that was another victim of smallpox that's there. And there was one bartender who he had quit for 
as as a reason from a, a different ghost sighting. He had seen the ghost of uh, I can't remember if it was. I don't think it was Wild Bill. I think it was the other one. No, it was Seth. Seth. It was Seth so he, he spotted the full body apparition of Seth in like a closet, and he had like his, you know, he had like one leg up or something like that. And the ghost looked right at him, and when he looked at him, he had no face. And this guy was like, mm. "Cool, I'm out. Quit. Never coming <laughs> back." Did come back. Came back and got his job back. So his whole thing was like, "I never worked there again until I started working there again." But anyways, but one of the things that he has there was this weird connection with this little ghost child and this ghost comes up and communicates with him. He's like a psychic of some sorts. And this mm -hmm. ghost is always talking to him. And during one investigation, they had a voice recorder going and the guy's like, uh, he says, all right, we're done here. And the, you know, they captured an EVP around the same time that kind of said the same thing. So there might be something there. Uh, this guy definitely has seen and feels things. He was a very serious guy. So something, you know, and that's an employee eyewitness account. So could it be, yeah. true? Could it be not? I, I think I heard a different bartender that quit because he saw Seth Bullock appear at the end of the bar, like just out of thin air, just show up. Mm -hmm. And then he just kind of looked at him and he like tipped his cap or something like that and then just faded away. And the bartender was like, nope, and left that night, like right away. He didn't, he didn't stay till the end of his shift. He was like, uh, I'm out of here. That was terrifying. And I will see you later. I'm going to go report on the weather now. Can't really blame them. We That's another one of those like recurring stories that we always hear is the, the bartender that shows up to a haunted location, sees something, and then just leaves and never, come, never comes back. Yeah. You know, the, the, the construction crews with the renovations, the bartender yep. with the apparitions. Yeah. But yeah. that's actually a, a ghost hunting hack. If you're ever if you're ever investigating <laughs> a haunted hotel, go right to the bar and talk to the bartender because they always have ghost stories. Send Jesse up there to order a Miller Lite and then just watch <laughs> the bartender's face and see where he looks. And then you will find the ghost every time, from what I understand. I'm sorry, I just I'm not familiar with that beverage that you're mentioning. Uh, Moving on, a uh, lot of chatter saying all kids are demons. No, wait, all kids are demons. <laughs> this is a fact. This Ricardo, is a <laughs> Ricardo, come on. Uh, <laughs> but, um, they're saying uh, children, ghosts, or demons. Chad is agreeing and disagreeing. I am interested with what Mara and Andrew are talking about, which was the uh, black-eyed children. Yeah, we. I don't think we be... covered oh, them yet. The it's gonna be a whole episode. Of, but... The ghost of Canic Chase, I think, is where that originated. But the, they, they're spotted all around the world. Mm -hmm. But the, it originated over in England. Yeah, this has to be like a dark mysteries thing. So let's save it for that. But Mara does say I got a pick of one of those black-eyed kids with my daughter when she was in her baby swing. Creeped me out. If you still have that picture, definitely throw that in the Discord if you haven't already, because that sounds horrifying and let's say it like again we'll save that for a future episode because this stuff is creepy as hell i was just i went down like a TikTok rabbit hole of black eyed kids videos and they're really uh really creepy there's that one song on TikTok that like all the creepy conspiracy videos use and it just makes every video a thousand times creepier so i'm gonna have to uh plagiarize that one or something for our episodes creep up these episodes a little bit you know don't ever say it on a live show though don't ever let anyone know that you're about to plagiarize something while we're live on listen you just called yourself a meteorologist all bets are off that was, right? that's a fact <laughs> that's i a just fact. looked outside it's snowing what done. do you think about that job is done. Dave? i concur <laughs> Hey, he concurs. He's got a PhD. We got to believe that for sure. Yep, that's right. Kate in the chat says that she feels like Rob always finds the ghost, and that's not entirely true. We talked the about ghost it usually finds Rob. <laughs> that that is true. <laughs> um, but when we went to the Houghton Mansion, the ghost was all about Dave that night, that like for the most part. So it's not always me that's finding the ghost, but yes, I do tend to have a few more interactions than Dave and Jesse. From time to time, um, yeah. She just said "faz joke." I was, I was oh. pretty sure that she was making a faz reference. Uh, I thought she was talking about like our actual investigations, which works for that as well. Um, I've never died in either, so that's that's what matters. I've never, <laughs> never lost my life in a real investigation or on phasmophobia. Luckily, so. fifty percent of that is true. So yeah, all of it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about Seth Bullock. His ghost is like the most prevalent at this hotel and he's seen all around the place there's a big common misconception that he died in the hotel he did not die in the hotel he died at his home 
he is buried on Mount Moriah Cemetery, like on the mountain overlooking an area that he really liked, but like it's been overgrown since then. So it doesn't quite have the view, I guess, that it did when he passed away. Really made me think of Arthur Morgan and Red Dead Redemption 2. So like as I was hearing that story, I'm like, oh, it's, it's Arthur Morgan all over again. But sometimes but, makes an appearance in our episodes. He almost did in this one. <laughs> I I had I had Red Dead footage in the episode playing poker, and then I came across that reenactment, and I was like, I have to use the reenactment because it yeah. just it works better. But there was a poker scene from Red Dead Two in in this episode for uh, for a hot minute. I love just being able to insert Red Dead things. So. You were talking about the death. Spoiler alert for people who haven't played Red Dead Redemption yet. You're talking about the the death of Arthur Morgan. Yeah, we we I saved it for you because I know you like to spoil the game of Red Dead Redemption too for everybody. Like you well, did. You for, just said that. Like you just did. You literally just said. <laughs> I didn't say if it was his or if he came across something. Hey, real quick, I ten dollars in super chat from Irish Assassin. First donation on YouTube from Irish, I believe. Thank you, my man. If you guys haven't checked out Irish Session on YouTube or Twitch yet, make sure you do that if you like watching some Call of Duty games. Irish has been here for a long time with the Hometown Ghost Stories crew. He actually restreams our stream onto his stream. He's brought in a lot of viewers, a lot of followers and subscribers and everything. And uh, he just he's always talking about it. I, I, I'm one of the mods on his channel, so I'm in there all the time watching his stuff. And he's always just talking about our podcast. So can't say enough about Irish Sass. And thank you so much for the ten dollars. And make sure you guys go check him out for sure. Love one it. One of the legends awesome. here. Uh, so Seth Bullock's ghost. The, I like the the thought process that people have behind him. It's that he's there to watch the staff of the hotel still, and if the staff is standing by idly or not doing anything. He starts to like bang stuff around or like cause interactions to get them to start working again, which is like the worst, right? It's like, well, my boss has been dead for 112 years, but <laughs> he won't he stay still dead. won't get off my ass. <laughs> Just leave me alone. I get a 15 minute break. It's in the law. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, Just still being a boss. Although it makes sense though, right? Residual haunting. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It is. Go ahead and just say it, Jesse. Just bring oh, it up. Matthew T coming through the twenty dollar top donation of the day. Uh, it says there can only be one hashtag koala bear life. Only some will understand the koala bear <laughs> joke. If you're a patron and you join the pre-show hangout, you would know that joke. Is all I'm going to say. Uh, Ambi says Arthur Morgan. That game has some interesting Easter eggs. It absolutely does. That's like it's got to be the best game of all time. Like storyline game. Love mm, it. It is. I heard, I've heard The Last of Us also competes with it. So, The Last of Us and Story that are Wars. probably my two favorite storyline games. Atmospheric Bioshock is still my favorite, like atmosphere of all time for a game. Mm. Red Dead has such an expansive atmosphere. No, it's great. I'm not. I'm not knocking it, but Bioshock is its like own thing, right? Like it's just you can't replicate it we should not be talking about this we should be talking about yeah the hauntings of deadwood <laughs> we can discuss video games on another time um, yeah, was... but let's get back to seth bullock's ghost because we keep going off track from this he he has uh been seen on multiple occasions throughout the hotel and that opening story that i told i kind of like embellished some of it for for the show but it's based off of a real story that happened where this family was staying at the hotel and their child went missing. Like they could not find the child. They looked everywhere in this hotel. They couldn't find the child anywhere. They're looking around Their People are helping them look. Everyone's frantic. All of a sudden they go back into the room and he's just sitting on the bed, one of the beds. And they're like, where were you? He's like, I was lost in the hotel. I couldn't find my way. And a man with a in a cowboy hat and a big bushy mustache helped me. And as they're like leaving the hotel the next day, he looks at a painting or a picture, whatever it was. And he goes, Mom, that's that's the guy. Like, that's the guy that came and helped me. And it was that's so a weird picture of South Bullock. Right. And it's just it's such a creepy story in its own right that I was like, this is like the opening ghost story. Yeah, you know, for it's, sure. It's so terrifying. Dude, 
unmistakable mustache too. Seth Bullock had like the mustache of mustaches. Like his mustache had a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, like, it was, it was like, it went over his whole, yeah, it was a- absolutely epic, epic level mustache. Yeah. And he was the first sheriff of the town of Deadwood. You know, the wild bill murder happened. The lawlessness was getting out of hand, according to people that live there. And the governor, he was, um, he has a badass story too, where he, he captured a horse thief. This guy steals this horse, right? This is before he gets to the Deadwood. And this is when he's still uh, a sheriff somewhere else or a deputy or whatever he is. And he captures this guy that stole this horse and he's holding him. And you know how people were back in the day, uh, a lynch mob formed to get this horse thief. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill them themselves. So Seth Bullock's out there. He's like, I'm not going to let you kill him. Takes the guy out, reads him his last rites, strings him up himself and kills him in front of the lynch mob. And he's like, I'm the one who deals justice here. And this was, and we're going to do this by the law. And this was part of the law. Judge, jury, executioner. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, it's like he may have been saving this guy from an absolutely horrific death. I think that's what it was. I think that's why he did it. I think, like, and honestly, it was a little both. I think it was a little both. It was like I'm the guy that does this. You guys don't do this, and I don't. They're going to tear your limb from limb here. So I'm actually saving you here. And this is if you do go watch the show Deadwood. This is like the opening scene to Deadwood. Is this happening? Like this is right. They show it. They start with this. I think like the location's a little off, but it's essentially the same story of what really happened in real life. It's just, it's insanity. It's just crazy. Like that, that he, he did that. And he stood up to this mob of like a hundred people. And he's like by himself. He's just like, no, I'm going to be the one that does it. That's what the law states. So that's the way we're going to. I think it. it was more of him asserting his dominance than it was a mercy thing. Although it could have been both. But if you think about a town that's kind of heading in the direction of vigilanteism, if that's a mm-hmm. word, um, you're the sheriff of that. You can't have that because it completely undermines your authority. Right. You're right about that. I think the same thing happened with actually before we get there, I just got the notification that Irish assassin not only gave us a $10 donation, but he also just signed up as our newest VIP on Patreon. So thank you so much, Irish. And welcome to the VIPs, my friend. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Actually, I guess before I jump into that, we should touch on Broadhead's cryptic comic of uh, comment of the week, which is hair continues to grow after death. Bullock's mustache must be even more impressive after 100 <laughs> years. <laughs> Absolutely true. But on the same subject with these kind of like almost pop up courts or, or quick um, swift justice being dealt or, or whatever. I mean, I believe that the man who murdered Wild Bill was found innocent from this pop up court, wasn't he? So the man who murdered, who murdered Wild Bill, um, well, we'll get into that story. We want to thank Lily for donating $21 in Super Chat saying Murph and Ridge is in West Union, Ohio. So that opening story, that member story is, takes place in West Union, Ohio. So to clarify. That, well, thank but, you, Lily, and thank you for the $21. You don't have to do that. The, um, I still want you to send me that hoodie, please. Thank you. And... Yeah, so the guy that killed Wild Bill was tracked down. He was prosecuted and found innocent. And people were pissed like that he was found innocent. So they went and they retried him. And they said that it was not double jeopardy, even though it absolutely was. Like, because they didn't present any new evidence or anything like that. And basically, it was all about it was all about the fact that people were upset and they wanted him dead. So the state was like, yep, dead. Oh, well, I mean, he was definitely guilty, right? Yeah, he was <laughs> definitely. He was, good, so. Well, that's, that's the thing. It's like, why was he found innocent in the beginning? Uh, and there's, there's some reasons why they think that he killed him. So the main reason is basically this dude's losing a lot of money at a poker table. We've all seen it. We've seen people do this and they get to be like real, <laughs> antsy and like douches and stuff at the table and wild bill was actually nice to the dude he's like hey man you should leave you're losing a lot of money i don't want to see you lose anymore you don't have it on you he was like getting credits and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and he's like 
oh, and by the way, here's some money for breakfast. Just, you know, kind of go walk it off. Go eat. It's on me. Go eat. Like I can just, see how this could be taken out of context, though. Especially, yeah, with especially if he took it. Where it's, it's like, like, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win this back. I'm gonna win this back. This guy's like, dude, you know what? Why don't you just go? Here's five bucks. We we'll get yourself some breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Which in five bucks at that time, he's like, let me go buy a house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could see how that would just only piss people off even more. It's like, dude, yeah. I don't need your, I don't need your charity, and I don't need your advice. Although he probably did. You know, not, I mean? but not to murder, not to shoot him execution style on the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. Also, maybe come up with a with with a better catchphrase if you're going to kill a guy like because he said, like, take that. It's like, come on, bro. Like, you're that's what you're going to say. You're just like, take that after you shoot him. Like, you know, after after he did that, he's walking. He's like, just, oh, God, oh, God damn it. Take that. Oh, man. That uh. wasn't it. It was so I practiced this in the mirror for three hours this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had this whole it did, it monologue. Did not, it did not go as planned. I said, take that, and then I honked a clown horn twice. <laughs> <laughs> take that. <laughs> so take uh, that and my voice cracked and <laughs> take <laughs> that. <laughs> tripped over a stuffed animal. I didn't even know we had stuffed animals you, at this time. You eat eggs. No, you eat the eggs. Don't know what that's from. Um, because Matthew he made him get breakfast. get breakfast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought it was like a line from a movie. Anyways, uh, Matthew Thomas says, Rob wants that guy's attorney for when he kills Dave. Uh, we have one one attorney or one attorney here at Hometown Ghost Stories, and that's Rob Mesh Besher. Yeah. Oh, Ricardo brings it up. Best messer. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> so, yeah, this. so they do end up hanging this guy and killing him, but it was like, A, he was guilty. B, he wasn't found guilty. It's just a whole weird story, but they did end up executing the guy that that ended up uh, killing Wild Bill. And now Wild Bill is believed to be haunting the town, and specifically Wild Bill's bar. And the thing about this is he was killed in Old Saloon number 10, but the entire town burnt down. Like that big fire, the, the main one, took like everything. So nobody knows like the exact location. They have an idea and they think it's where Wild Bill's bar is. There is a new old saloon number 10 in Deadwood, but it's not built on the same location. But the cool thing about that one is they supposedly have his death chair. Like that he was sitting in. Wait, maybe they cursed his gambling chair. Maybe mm. that was the whole problem. Maybe somebody who's way better at that than I am. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah. You're not it's great be, at it. It's gonna be hard to tell what what was where, and to be fair, which chair is which when the whole town just keeps burning down over and over again. That's a good point. And it's not like they were like making um, architectural plans of Deadwood. They were just kind of throwing shit up as it went, right? Like, as like we said, this was like an outlaw town. This town was illegal. They were not supposed to build this town. Like, it's an illegal town, and they they ended up you know, burning down. It's not like they were like, oh, let's go consult the old plans from architecture meteorologist Rob Coakley, the best guy that's ever lived in Deadwood. Weather, yeah. weather observer. No, I'm an I'm a meteorologist. You're a weather observer. True. Yeah, apparently they, they would... <laughs> I am absolutely veteran, weathered weather observer. Anyways, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> apparently they, they, they were just building on top of old foundations too. So it's like if a building burnt down, they'd be like, well, this still seems to be intact. So you still actually have in a lot of these buildings, you have a lot of the older foundations from the older buildings that did burn down maybe 100, 150 years ago. So it's it's tough to say which is which and which haunting could be coming from where. And, you know, who knows what these buildings used to be in the past. It's a very yeah. mysterious kind of place. It is. It, it's It just looks so cool, though. Like there's that main street to walk down. Um, reminds me of like almost a smaller Nashville, right? Like it has that, it has that feel. I mean, obviously it's like more Western, what you think of when you think of like Billy the Kid and stuff. That's the other thing. Everybody came through this town. Wyatt Earp showed up to this town and Seth Bullock approached him in town because they thought that he was there to become the new lawman. Like they thought he came here because he started hearing the reputation of the place and Wyatt Earp kind of like always wanted to grow his own legend. It seemed like by showing up to these places and Seth Bullock walked up to him and was like, dude, get out of here. We don't want you here. We're going to take care of ourselves. You can go somewhere else. And Wyatt Earp ended up leaving after Seth Bullock went up to him. Fair enough. Yeah. 
so very very cool story seth bullock was only the sheriff for nine months he lost an election to retain being the sheriff and then he lost the second election as well but he stayed in town like his whole life um and that kind of brings us to the shadow i was gonna say but before we get off the subject of white earp that kind of ties into i believe his episode two which is tombstone arizona right a lot of parallels with that one with this one um both yeah, you shootouts, you get the Cowboys. Yeah, it, they all have their own unique history, but there's some overlap. Uh, Calamity Jane was here. She was tied to to Wild Bill Hickok. It seems like he didn't care for her from some of the stuff I was reading, and she just kind of followed him around almost. I, I didn't read the full story, but she ended up being buried next to him in Deadwood. So <laughs> did she follow him? Followed him even into the grave. <laughs> so I, there was a story about like they did it as a joke, like people that knew Wild Bill and knew that he was always trying to get away from her. That <laughs> after she died, they buried her next to him just because, like, oh, you're not going to escape her in death. It just put her right next to him. That's so diabolic. <laughs> yeah, but we also had you also had um the female poker player. She was a very famous one. I believe it was uh, Poker Alice. That was a uh, called she frequented. The area as well, I'm pretty sure. Also, Madam Mustache, which doesn't sound like a real name, but <laughs> she was a famous gambler as well. Her, they call her Madam Mustache because she had a mustache. Basically, she had like this dark line around her lip. And uh, yeah, I was going like, to ask if they if she wore like a fake mustache. That would be funny. Yeah, because I wonder if it, I don't know if it's true. If it's true, or if I'm just making it up, or if maybe maybe women had a harder time getting into the poker games back then. Oh, I'm sure considering they did. the time. So maybe faking her faking her gender should wear a disguised mustache. Yeah, that that might have been the case too. That they were. I don't know, but you do hear about a lot of famous female gamblers, but I also think they might have been famous because they were few and far between. You know, that yeah. might be that might be part of the thing too. Well, apparently, like Poker Alice is pulling in. I don't know if it was what would be worth now, but she was pulling in upwards of like one hundred fifty thousand dollars a day playing poker. She was a beast. Oh wow! That's I would crazy. assume. I would assume that's in today's money. I would. Just, I don't think she's making a million dollars her time. You know? No, she would have retired after a week back then. Yeah, exactly. Um, and let's get into the shadow figure because it's very hard to find anything on it at the Bullock Hotel. It's very few and far between. There was only a couple stories. I did tie that into the opening story that wasn't part of the actual kid going missing, but I kind of did my own little thing there. But people have seen shadow figures within the Bullock Hotel, and they say that when they see it, it's like a feeling of dread almost, like sinister vibes in the air, and they feel real uneasy when when they come in contact with it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you get that. You almost never hear of like a happy shadow figure story. Except right. for that one listener submitted one from you know, last week or the week before, mm-hmm. which was pretty cool. But yeah, you brought up a great part, point that it might not have actually been a shadow figure. It might have just been because it was dark. So everything's going to look like a dark silhouette True. at the time. But yeah, True. usually shadow figures are associated with some sort of demonic or malevolent activity. Usually not good. No not good. bueno. Shadows are agents of darkness. Always associated with bad. Mm. So that's kind of the Bullock Hotel. And if you're watching on the YouTube video, uh, you got to see like a walkthrough of the hotel, which was very cool to see what it looks like now. It looks like they didn't change it much. Like I'm sure there's some upgrades, of course, but the lighting that they're using in there, it still looks very late 1800s, early 1900s in there. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um. Like I said, just the definitely, definitely a place that like if you can get to Deadwood, it looks like a great place to spend a weekend or like a two day, like a two day trip. Go stay there for a night or two and just check the place out. How close is it to Mount Rushmore, Rob? Since you're an expert on mountain locations, um, I would say that it is forty five ge- kilometers. <laughs> gotcha. You heard it here first. You all just drop quickly. That's good. Uh, That's good. Actually, a lot of these buildings still have that old Wild West feel to them. And even ones that aren't bars or or saloons, I've noticed, they mm -hmm. must have been at one point because they still 
even places that aren't bars look like bars. Like they still have the bar set up. It's just different things like gift shops and stuff like that. But it still looks like a Wild West bar, which like like we said, I'm all in whenever we see that stuff. I just I like places that lean into their history and what they're known for other than places that try to go away from it. And Deadwood clearly leans into the history of its town with like every single building that's there. So I, I like to see that. I mean, I know it's like kind of touristy and all that, but fine. That's that's if I go to Deadwood, that's what I want to see. Yes, please lean into that. Nothing yeah. drives me more insane than when you have like a really cool old building that used to be an old tavern. There's one in Plymouth. I won't name it because I like the place, but it's just really old building that they turn into just a, it's just a dumb sports bar. Why would you do that? It's like one of the oldest buildings oh, I know in the know. area. And it could be such a cool, like, you know, colonial tavern if they just leaned into that theme. But it's they just the mill, it right? In. Yes, <laughs> that narrows it right down if you're from the area. <laughs> so, but yeah, drives me nuts every time. And I do like the place, and every time I go there, it's just like, oh, yeah, could, if, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, if they just turn that into like an old, even if it was like an Irish pub, which it might actually technically be, instead of a, like, just get rid of the TVs and make it all Irishy pubish, that would kind of just turn it into Deadwood. Just turn it into Deadwood. Just abandon the building and open it up for paranormal investigations. Is that so much to ask for? Yeah, yeah. that's all we want. We just yeah. need more stop being so selfish in downtown historic Plymouth. Stop trying to make a living and let us do what we want to do for 12 hours. Exactly. Then go back to it. It's fine. Uh, eh. Yeah. That and like, like Salem's a good example. Salem just fully embraces what it's known for. Yeah. And it's always a great time to visit there. We've said enough about that for sure. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is wild bill haunting a couple of the locations within town, mostly wild bills bar where it's believed that he was executed, but it's not just him there. It's they hear like patrons and people talking and it, it's the classic haunt, right? It just, it reminded me a lot of the brothel episode because there's a lot of brothels that were in Deadwood and that's where people went to have a good time. They, they lived their lives there. They probably had some of their better moments within Deadwood, probably had some of their worst moments in Deadwood, especially for wild bill. Didn't, uh, didn't live to see through it. Creepy little side fact. He did tell his friends when he was going to Deadwood, he goes, I don't remember the exact quote, but basically I'm going to Deadwood. I don't think I'm going to make it out of there alive. Mm, that is creepy. Yeah. But I wonder if it was like a Tupac thing where Tupac was like, oh my God, he predicted his death, but he predicted his death on every single album. It was like, well, he was kind of crying wolf at that point, wasn't he? <laughs> so I wonder if, I wonder if Bill was doing that. Like whenever he was like, all right, I'm going to go. It's probably going to be the last time. Cause I get, you know, people want to shoot me. So, yeah, but, but apparently of... when, he, when he would sit at that table, did you bring up the fact that he always tried to get his back to the wall? Yes. What? Okay. You did talk about that. All right. Just make sure. And what was the last time? The one time he didn't. Correct. Yeah. Damn. They, mm -hmm. and he tried to change chairs with like two different people at the table. He asked them to, to switch seats with him and they wouldn't switch seats. So it turns just... out there was the right choice for them not to switch seats. Well, I mean, I don't think that well, guy was coming for them. Cheap. You don't like think I, it was the chair that he had the grudge against? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're back to the cursed chair theory. That's yeah. the seat that he lost all the money in. He's like, if I lose money here, you're going to lose your life. Ricardo <laughs> brings up that Tupac isn't dead. So there's that theory. And then um, Matthew T says, Irish pubs have TVs for soccer. American Irish pubs, definitely. And I would assume it's at some pubs in Ireland they do. But going to different restaurants and pubs in, in Ireland when we did, there wasn't a TV in the place in most yeah, places. Yeah, they were like old, real old school. Although my, my issue wasn't even the fact that there's TVs. It was just that they went with a sports bar theme. And I like sports. Are oh, you talking about the one in Plymouth? Yeah. I thought yeah. we were moving off that. because Well, no, because he brought it. We were talking about yeah, Irish pubs at the same time. You right, brought right, us right. back. I did. Well, Matthew brought us back. Brodad brings up that the guys that were sitting at the table were in on it. And that is a theory because... I was I was getting into this when we got sidetracked earlier. It might not just be about like him feeling slighted. They he the guy that killed him said that Wild Bill had killed a family member of his years before and that he was enacting revenge against him. And it matched out that Wild Bill did kill somebody with the same last name as this guy, but they couldn't find the family connection. So they're not 100 percent sure that was accurate or not. Hmm. Was he enacting uh, revenge or was he exacting revenge? Uh, it doesn't matter. They both work. Okay. 
we don't want to do this. <laughs> we get into uh, I'm a I'm a meteorologist, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> we get into lengthy, lengthy English language discussions. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> A rare IPA that you've never heard of has donated ten dollars and said, "Who ordered <laughs> the rare IPA with a clear picture of what I heard rumors of might be Miller Lite?" That uh, <laughs> takes, it's not the top donation of the day, but it's my favorite donation of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Someone went through a lot of effort for that one, and I, I suspect I know who it was. Anyways, <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, so. Yeah, Wild Bill is supposedly haunting the town. So many people are haunting the town. Like I said, every building in this town is haunted. Very cool location. Would love to go to. If you've actually gone to Deadwood and you have some stories or have heard some stuff, you should jump in our jump in our Discord, first of all, and tell us about them. Or shoot us an email, hometownghoststories at gmail.com, and let us know what you've heard about Deadwood or any other place that you've gone to. Yes, jump in our Discord. Our Discord channel is fun. I've been in it more and more uh, as of late, and it uh, it is a good time. Oh, thanks for joining us, David. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it took, it took a little it took a little while for me to come around. <laughs> right now, in the, in the Discord, we are trying to name what we call our Patreon members, and the uh, Oubliettes is like at the <laughs> top of the list right now. Just create a poll. Just create a poll into it. Yeah, there are some good suggestions, so you can jump in there and join that as well. Is there anything else you guys want to hit on in Deadwood? I think we're probably okay. I think we just, we might come back to that one because there is a couple other locations. Yeah, I want I wanted to cover the cemetery too, but I didn't want to like make the episode, you know, uh, Jesse open and go story length from <laughs> yeah, last it's good week. That you, you just kept it under seven minutes. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Yeah, nice done. Uh, no, that that's good. That that's a fun location. It's definitely we actually got to come up with an actual list, like places in order that we want to hit sooner than later. And this one would be probably top five for me. It seems like an awesome time. Would you, okay? So here's a question: Would you rather go to Deadwood or would you rather go to Tombstone? Ooh. Probably depends on the time of year, but I would probably say Tombstone. I mean, you're you're. I'm the meteorologist here. I don't talk about what the time of year. We're just in a nutshell, in a vacuum. Which one of the two would you rather go to? I I would still probably go Tombstone. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I, I think I would lean towards Deadwood. I think I also would want to go to Deadwood as well. Uh, Tombstone is very... I want to go to both. Let's get that out of the way. It's not like I don't want to see both, but I don't know. Deadwood, the vibe of Deadwood... Oh my god! I just said the vibe of, and I want to vomit. But the vibe of Deadwood, no uh, cap, <laughs> no, no cap. I hate it. I hate it. It just, I don't know. There's something that that feels like it draws you more to that place than to Tombstone. Tombstone's cool, but Deadwood just has like this this feeling of like I feel like there's more going on there specifically for the paranormal than in Tombstone. Could be wrong. Could be. That's my uh, overall thought process. Well, let's Very go to both. I mean, you see, see both places are doing all like the reenactments of the shootouts and everything like that. So it seems like wherever you go, it would be a damn good time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, which one do you guys think is more haunted in the chat um, or in the YouTube comments? Do you think Tombstone? Do you think Deadwood? Let us know where you would rather go. Hmm, like anyway, the majority are saying Tombstone at the moment, but. Yeah, well. Either Whatever. way, both awesome and both are on the list. Yes. Andy had asked how many people live in Deadwood. The answer is 1,201. Yep. And actually, when I, I Googled it, it Googled automatically Googled a comparison to Tombstone, which is 1,307. Mm. So oh, that's, a, that's as of 2021 census, which is the yep. most recent available. Well, yeah, it's... Uh clearly just a touristy place and not many people live there they probably live around there more so anyways uh that's gonna kind of do it for deadwood for now P potentially a part two potentially an investigation in the future love it who Absolutely. is Let's, who's uh, up who's up next week dave i am ah I am 99% sure we are going to Washington, D.C. So I went down to Washington, D.C. earlier. I uh, actually just flew back in last night. And my attention, well, I was going down to help my brother move. But uh, 
Seth, but um, I was all like, oh, well, I'm down there. I'll, I'll grab some, I'll hit some locations and, and gather some in- info and some intel and I'll put together an episode. But everything was so like, boom, boom, we had to go so fast that I didn't really right. have a lot of time to do any extra stuff. So uh, I might still cover it because there's a lot of cool stuff down there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I saw the picture you visited the uh, exorcist stairs. Yeah, that was cool. That was actually the first thing I did. I landed, got off the plane and Ubered right to the exorcist stairs. Got oh, I thought cool. it was weird. <laughs> That's awesome because, you know, it, it was funny because I was going through like one of these horror movie Facebook groups. And I saw somebody post that they're like, oh, I just got to D.C. and I visited these stairs. I was like, oh, I should call Dave and tell him to do that. And then I saw that already in the comments, you were there with your picture of you on the stairs. Like, me too. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, all right. So we already yeah. got there. Uh, let's thank our patrons real quick for our VIPs. We have Allison V, Jeannie R, Justin T, Lisa J, Mike B, Mom and Pops, Wilkins. We have Robert H, Stephen V, Demon King, and our brand new VIP, the one and only Irish Assassin. Thank you so much. We also have Amby Rose, Anna C, even better hometown ghost stories, Lily, IDGAF Batch. We have Jake V, <laughs> Janet G, Mar F, Rachel B. Welcome back, Rachel, as well. Uh, Stephanie A, Sydney B, Al Capone, Anthony T, Ashley M, Brandon W, Brennan B, Captain McSlugs, Cody G, Huggy Bear, Joe R, Kiri Lee J, Mark M, Matthew T, Mariah M, Papa Squatch, Paul from St. Louis. Welcome in, Paul. That's another brand new patron there. We have Sarah R, Scotty L, Solar Flare, Soph, and Cooper. Thank you guys so much for as little as $3 a month. You can join in on the Patreon, get uh, some limited edition stuff as well as early access ad free episodes which is a lot of fun and uh bonus content yeah and i actually got those patrons in the episode five minutes before we went live it felt like but we got them in there for the for the for the viewers that are watching nicely done yeah that was a uh, last second for sure yes. any reviews uh we do have one review you would think that i'd be ready with it uh, because that's generally what I do at the end of the show. I'm also but, pretty sure it was less than five words. It is less than five words. <laughs> so it was a brief one. But but we'll take it. I'd rather you write five words than write nothing at all. And if you're not someone oh, that can write, um, this helps us tremendously. And like you said, it's from Line T Mo. It's titled I Love Y'all. And it just simply says, I love to hear y'all. Which perfect. Perfect. Sorry. That's all we need. We appreciate it. And believe it or not, easiest way to help the show. Review us wherever you listen. It doesn't cost anything. It takes 30 seconds. You press five stars. You don't press four, three, two, one. You press five. You leave a comment. We read it on air. And we appreciate you tremendously for doing so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Stephanie BS, uh, Seth is a new papa, right? Seth is a new father, our little brother Seth. So we have a new niece and that is very exciting david got to meet her i'm jealous and i will get down there as soon as i can but yeah there is a new member of the wilkins family and that is always exciting so congratulations to seth and his wife and we'll see you guys soon appreciate that anything else gentlemen nope that's gonna do it for me (laughs) classic name change right there so rob is the uh, chief meteorologist rob coakley thank (laughs) you for that and your accurate weather reports and expertise knowledge on all mountain ranges thanks again to everybody who donated in super chat today uh, the rare IPA, Matthew T, uh, Irish Assassin, uh, and I already thanked everybody else, but yeah, uh, Matthew T, Irish, yeah, and I believe we just got another one. Boom, Josh O dropping five bucks as well. So thank you guys so much. And we'll be back on Friday. We went out and we saw the new Scream movie, so we are going to drop a review on that. That will be up on Patreon tomorrow. Yes, that's the plan. That is yes. the plan. <laughs> Thank you for the name change there, Chief Weather Observer, Jesse Wilkins. That is me. <laughs> and uh, I think that'll pretty much do it. Thank you guys all for tuning in. We appreciate you for hanging out. And we'll see you guys on Friday. And then back on Tuesday for a brand new live episode of Hometown Ghost Stories, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you there. Later. <laughs>
We don't tell anyone. We'll just show up with a live show one day and you won't know about it unless you have that notification bell turned on. So if you don't, turn on that notification so that you don't miss any of our impromptu live shows. Catch us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, comment live, watch your comments pop up on the screen, interact with us, make fun of us, whatever. And if you want to support the show, leave us a five-star review on iTunes and we'll read it out loud live on the show. Also, for as little as $3 a month, you can subscribe to us on Patreon and join the legendary cast of patrons with your name in the credits. Plus, you'll gain access to all the extra bonus Patreon-exclusive content that we have on that platform. Either way, we'll be here next Tuesday with a brand new episode. We'll see you then.